My wife would describe my snoring as somewhere between an idling diesel truck and a freight train at full throttle. And I would wake up in the morning and I'd have this tremendous pain between my shoulder blades from my wife thumping me, trying to get me to stop. I went to a sleep specialist and he recommended a sleep study. And then he helped me understand what the results of the sleep study were really telling him. So sleep apnea appears to be present. Okay. So your number was 84. So meaning 84 times per hour, you had enough blockage to your airflow during sleep that it caused your oxygen levels to fall. And they went very low at times, yeah. right? And, and that's greater than once a minute, right? Yeah, I, I was just thinking that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some of the things that I can do to, to yeah. mitigate this, that's great. We have a number of different types of treatment for sleep apnea, the most common of which is called CPAP, or continuous positive airway pressure. And in people that can tolerate it, it's a highly effective therapy. Unfortunately, not everybody tolerates it that well, which is why we're working on, on new treatments. We'll sometimes use what's called an oropliance, which is a mouthpiece that goes in the mouth and pulls the jaw forward like that to prevent collapse of the back of the throat. If one is significantly overweight and they lose a large amount of weight, then it is possible that you could have a significant improvement or remission of your sleep apnea. Upper airway surgery is another option where you can cut away some of the tissue at the back of the throat. But CPAP is the most commonly used treatment for sleep apnea. And for those individuals who are able to use their CPAP on a regular basis, this dramatically can improve their lives. We'll have you see a respiratory therapist who specializes in sleep apnea treatment to set up the CPAP. This is actually a CPAP unit, very simple. Mm -hmm. Put some pressure up through the nose and to the back of the throat, push the tongue out of the way, open up the ear passages. When I first saw the, the CPAP equipment, one of the, the major concerns I had was around the mask. A little bit better. I wasn't sure how I was gonna to react to having something on my face. Let me show you two other masks that I've got that are fairly new. Everybody's face is unique. So getting a mask to fit effectively is often a cardinal part of the pathway to establishing effective treatment. CPAP's 95 to 100 percent effective. However, it's only effective if the patient puts the mask on. So we'll try a little smaller size, Dean. It is not easy. But for me, I had to, to keep my eye on the prize at the, end of this, at the end of this trip. And that was to get a good night's sleep so that I wouldn't be falling asleep in the middle of the day. I think you have to just stay with the program. Is this better? Excellent, okay. So the mask itself, when you see it for the first time, you pretty clearly understand all the downside, right? You can see it's clunky. It's not gonna be great for dating. It's clearly encumbering. That's all so obvious up front, and what's not obvious up front is the upside. Wow, well, that's good. I like that. The masks that we have and the machines that we have today are far superior than what we had even five years ago. And so if the patient puts the mask on, they sleep better, they wake up more refreshed, they have more energy to do things, intimacy is improved. And at the end of it, um, I tell the patient they're only going to put this on when they go to sleep, not when they go to bed. And most of them get that. Once I began to use that machine with a nasal mask that fit, it was beautiful. And life got a whole lot better. I wake up in the morning and my energy level is good. I'm able to do what I want during the day. My wife's getting a good night's sleep. I have two grandchildren. We spend a lot of time with them. I like my CPAP very much.